Jeff would come, and Bob and Terry would be disgusting right in front of me. I just really want the presence of God to be here tonight and to help us. And I appreciate when Rachel contacted me a few weeks ago, a month ago, and asked if we could do this. You guys just want to stand right here and face me. Um, and so I thought it was appropriate. She said, I know she's a little older. I want to have this done. And, you know, um, the important thing is that they're doing it, right? I don't think that this age matters. You are probably. Yeah, she's smiling and being shy. Amen. So, when I thought about Layla's dedication and the events that surround me, a very unique dedication tonight. Um, but you know, God is not eliminated from unique situations. Doesn't God make each one of us unique? And our story, our history is His story. It's, he gives each of us our story. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because, Rachel, you know, in your journey with Jeff, you know, your story's still going to be yours. You're going to see your side of it. Jeff, you're going to see your side of it. They're still collaborate, but everybody's given their story. And so, like the story, um, Brother Bobby is very unique because uh, God has allowed um, Rachel and then co grandparents to help out in the situation of raising her. And so her situation is unique, but I believe it is also divinely appointed of God as you've taken your responsibility. Rachel, I texted you this afternoon because I needed to know Layla's middle name. And part of that is because I, I think names are important and I didn't know her middle name. And when I went to look up her name, Layla means a couple of things. I'm like, I, I, I need to know the middle name. Because when I looked up Layla, it actually means dark night or intoxication. So that was very, very interesting as I looked that name up. And I thought, well, I want to know a second name to, to help out with that. And so Isabella means devoted to God. I think that's very interesting in itself. Because, uh, you know, there's some unique situations that maybe to others may appear to be a dark night. Um, to lay the situation with her mom in an accident. And, but you know, God takes those situations and He uses them and He turns the dark night into the brightest of days. And I believe the intoxication is this, that in the Word of God in Acts chapter number 2, Jesus told His disciples to go and to tarry and to wait for the Comforter to come. They were concerned because He was no longer going to be with them in a tangible way for them to touch His body. And it, it concerned them. We know what that's like. We like the security of people that we love and depend on being there. And the disciples felt that way. And Christians and followers of Christ felt that way. But He said, I can't be everywhere at one time. So I'm going to send you another Comforter. Go and wait for Him. We know the story of what happened in Acts chapter number 2. It's more than a story, but it's history. It's the reality of God's Spirit feeling, folks. And, and so the onlookers looked and they said, these men are drunk. They said, no, these men aren't drunk as you suppose because it's just 9 o'clock in the morning. It's too early. But what you see is the Spirit of God upon them. I believe that little Layla, her life can be filled with the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm believing for God to fill her life with His Spirit. I've not seen her for a few weeks and I'm amazed. You know, we, we pray in our devotions and, 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 and throughout our days we pray and in church we pray. We pray for Layla and her heart catheterization. And when I picked her up yesterday and saw her, I was like, wow. She is growing and developed and doing good. God's taking good, good care of her. This is just the beginning of great things. But Isabella, being devoted to God, I believe, Layla, that starts with your grandparents and the life that you see. And the, and the commitment will help you be devoted to God. Amen. Devoted to God. And so tonight, this is about Layla and her being devoted to God. I'm going to ask you this evening 
I'm going to put each of your first names in it. And I'm going to give you a charge. And the charge isn't before me. It is holding yourself accountable before the church, but it's a charge before God. God's Word says it's better not to make a vow than to make a vow and break it. Hey, hats off to you folks. I know what it's like raising a little girl the same age, two little girls the same age as Layla. And uh, I, I come to discover they have a mind of their own. <laughs> Did you all? Did, yeah. And so uh, some days it's really work. I mean, it's really work. I mean, I'm talking about the keeping up with the physical part, bathing and feeding and sleeping, and the, 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 the medicines that you know that Layla has had, the appointments that she needs, and then most of all, making sure that in your day you have time for God and reflecting God to her. And so, I'm going to give you a charge, and if you agree with this charge, I simply, at the end, want you to say, I do. And then I'm going to give a charge to our church. You know, uh, there's an old saying that says it takes a village to raise a child. I believe it takes a church to raise a child. You know, my little girls look forward to coming to church and seeing all the other little kids and certain people. They look, you know, they know, and they look forward to that. But I also love the way folks interact and help our children because it's reflecting God. Do you know what? I, I remember in my ears there's a lady that I'll never forget, Sister Dot Broadwater, and I'll never forget as a little child I'd hear her say, ah, 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 they're running in God's house. She was helping to raise me. It wasn't that she was overstepping her bounds, but, you know, mom and dad weren't there at the moment, and they were running. And, and I remember Sister Hours, that's Sister Megan's great grandma. She would, I would go down, and my sister and I would swing on her fence and yell her name, and she'd come out with snacks for us. And then at church, she would sing the songs in children's church, and she would pray with us and teach us. You know what she was doing? She was teaching us to love God because it took the community. It took the church to do that. So I'm going to give a charge to you as uh, not just grandmothers, but in the rearing of Layla. And then I'll give a charge to the church. And so do you, Jeff, Rachel, Terry, and Bobby, promise in the presence of God your friends, your family, and your church body to do your best to instill in Layla the values of the teaching that will lead her to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you promise to pray for her daily? Do you promise to entrust Layla to God in God's care and to offer her to God for His service in ministry? If you do, will you say, we do? So church, I want you to listen tonight in the middle of this charge. Do you, friends and members of Miracle Revival Church, do you promise to commit your time, your resources, your prayer to help Jeff and Rachel, Bobby and Terry to raise Layla in such a way that she will come to a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and come to grow to desire to serve God? If so, we answer, we do. Amen. Really, we're watching Layla grow. It's amazing to see how she has grown. But beyond her body is a soul that God has placed in her that long after this body will be put to dust, her soul will continue to live. And so it's important to nurture that soul. I'll share a little bit more of my message tonight that the majority of individuals who are church attenders and have a relationship with God, the vast majority of them, developed that relationship before they were 18 years of age. And so tonight it's important for us to do our best to put out an environment where Layla will want to love and grow and serve God. 
Listen, I want Layla, Layla to know, Layla, I want you to know Brother Seville loves you. And when I preach messages, it's because I preach them because I'm concerned that I want you to make heaven your home. I want you to live a long life of God you tear serving God. And so we as a church do that. And we as a church model what it's like to be Christians, Christ-like and followers of Christ. If we do it grumpingly and, 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 and meanly, it doesn't bring a desire to children to serve God, but if we do it with joy and with love, those children are going to see and say, I want what they have. And so there's a responsibility to each of us. So tonight, as you dedicate Layla to God, it doesn't mean that this is her, her soul is secure with God. It simply means that you're entrusting the rearing of her, that you're doing it in the light of eternity and that you want God's help. And one day Layla's going to get old enough that she'll be able to make a decision to serve God. But you want to instill that in her that she'll love and trust and serve God. So Layla, it's really easy when you're an infant to do this part. But I believe it's going to be easy tonight. Can, can I hold you? And can I pray for you? Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give a big smile to everybody out there? I saw you waving. Can you wave to everybody? Can you say hi to everybody? Yeah, everybody loves you here. We've been praying for you for a long time. So let's pray to God. Let's ask God to bless your life. To bless, bless your life. To raise you. Amen. Let's pray. She's a wiggle, so just have your arms ready. <laughs> Amen. Father, I love you and I'm thankful for your faithfulness. And God, I'm very grateful for the gift of the labor tonight. God, I'm humbled by the way that you've already worked and moved in our life, God. You've performed miracles, Lord, when our heart was heavy, even in our very infancy, God. But you were there every step of the way, God. You provided great things for her, and you're not done. God, you're working and moving in Layla's life, God, to give her a testimony of what your power can do. So, God, I pray a hedge of protection around about her. God, I pray that you would keep her from evil, God. Lord, I pray that you would keep her heart sensitive to you. God, I pray that tonight that at a very young age that Layla would sense your presence, God. Lord, that she would learn early on that you're a friend that's even closer than a brother and that she can uh, share the very contents of her heart with you. God, let her know you for a lifetime. God, I plead the blood of Jesus over her and I claim her for a worker in your vineyard. Whatever occupation you call her to, God, I pray that it would be one, Lord, that she would be able to touch lives for eternity. God, I pray that you would be with her in the near future, God, as she has to go through surgery, God. I pray that you, the great physician, would continue to touch her. God, I pray for her distant future, that you would keep her healthy. God, that you would keep her happy. God, that you would keep her in a place, God, that she would know your presence. God, I pray that you would give grace to Jeff and Rachel and Terry and Bobby, God. Lord, uh, the responsibility of raising a child, Lord, in the circumstances that it's contained in, God. Lord, I pray that although it, there may have been some, 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 some dark times, God, of, of, of trials that they've gone through, Lord, let the victory be that Layla's life is devoted to you. God, give them grace, give them patience, give them understanding, God. Give them wisdom, Lord. I pray that, Lord, when they don't know the answers, that they would look to you and you would provide, God, for them. God, I pray that you would bless them in this unique situation and that you would be glorified. Remind them every day that, Lord, is the task of taking care of Lord. God, sometimes can, can the grind of the day can be wearisome, God. Renew and strengthen and remind them to see this in the third hand. God is an opportunity to continue to water and nurture because harvest will come soon in the life of life. God bless this family in Jesus' name. Amen.
I just want to say I think they're doing a great job. They're doing a great job. You know, full plates and lots of things going on. Each of them are doing a great job. I just want to say this. Not to, Jeff has just taken on responsibility amazingly. I'm just, I can't say enough good about, about what I see in him taking care of, of Layla and uh, Gavin. And uh, Rachel balancing everything and taking things on and Bobby and Terry, you know, coming on the scene and, and, and being a support and help and you're busy working jobs and uh, it's amazing the love that is given. Amen. Continue to do a good job. Amen. I know sometimes, hey listen, I know parenting sometimes someone's not there giving you a pat on the back. But one day they will. One day Layla and Gavin are going to rise up. Amen. And they're going to bless you. Amen. Because of the work that you have done. So keep being faithful. Amen. And, uh, you know, in the middle of the work, sometimes I have to remind myself, uh, yesterday there was a lady and she looked at, at us and our girls and she said, twins, oh, oh. you know, and, uh, you know, twins are amazing. They're fun. But remember, they're twice the work. <laughs> When you finally get one of it, it seems like the other one, you know. So, uh, absolutely amazing. But, but, but I'm thankful, Sister Beverly. Sometimes folks stop me and they say to me, "Just enjoy it because it's going to go quick." Because sometimes you're in the middle of all the duties that you forget that it is going to go quick and it is going to quick. So we gotta enjoy it. So I encourage you. Turn with me in your Bibles. I just want to minister for a few moments this evening. Amen. As we looked at um, dedicating the lay on. And Mark 10, verse number 13. The Bible says, And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and he said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. I want to focus really on verse number 13, where the word of God says, And they brought young children to him that they should touch, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. You know, uh, in our society, have you noticed that uh, bringing children uh, to daycares and, and pre-K and, and programs are, it's getting younger and younger. You know, that uh, the schooling, and, and some of it is because two parents are working, and part of it becomes, you know, that they, they need that outlet for a little bit of respite and because of their schedules. Uh, but but uh, oftentimes it becomes playgrounds. Uh, but, but I want to say that the most needed thing that children need to do is they need to be brought to Christ. The most needful thing for any of us to do, listen, if you're a parenting, this is for you tonight. If you're a grandparent, this is for you tonight because you have opportunity. Amen. The most needful thing that we can do is to bring children to Christ. And so I want to look at this text. And they brought young children to Him that He should touch them. Uh, the first thing I want to look at, it's twofold. I just want to look at three things tonight. The first thing is the opportunity that they brought young children to Christ. This is the, the first thing I want to look at is the area. Where did they bring him to, the children to? They brought him, them to him or to Jesus. Parents, I want to tell you tonight that the greatest advantages of being able to take your children to Christ, you need to do it. I'm a pastor, but I'm also a dad. I'm also 
a Christian. And so I say this in a threefold way tonight. If you ever neglect an opportunity to take your children to where Christ is, shame on you. Really, we need to take full advantage of every opportunity to take our children where we know that Christ is. I'm not saying that in a harsh way. I'm saying that in a challenging way. Bring your children to Christ. Thank God that in this church, I love how we had a big crowd this morning the children's church. Poor Sister Beth and Brother Justin, they were probably very busy. Amen. But I'm glad that folks are seeing that this is an opportunity to bring our children to Christ. A kids crusade coming up. Vacation Bible school. Amen. If you go to other churches, the vacation Bible school. I, I, an opportunity to take your children to Christ. Amen. There's, there's activities where Christ is being introduced. Amen. Take your children where you know Jesus is. Uh, we, 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 we can fill our days with taking them to a lot of things. I, I, I know that, 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 that we live in a culture where sports is very important. I know that we live in a culture where, where we're told to uh, rest and get away. But in the middle of rest and get away, uh, remember Jesus. Amen. More important than being able to handle a ball or, or being talented in some way that's athletic, I want to encourage you, bring your children to where Jesus is. It's the needful thing. Take them to where Jesus is available. Take them to where they can get close to the Savior. I appreciate Dot was sharing with tonight her growing up in church and uh, how that but your parents took you where they knew Jesus was and look at what God's doing in your life today because of that foundation. Taking our children to where Jesus is. And I know that the question is going to be raised, well, Brother Seville, uh, the Word of God says, train up a child the way that they should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from But I brought my child to church and they don't, they don't go to church anymore. Wait, you trained your child in the way that you knew was correct, taking care of them for eternity, and they will never leave from the knowledge of God's Word. That which is implanted in them, God can quicken and bring back to them. It is not a failure. You did what is right. And so when life is all said and done and God has entrusted you with children, amen, do your very best to take the opportunity to bring them to where Jesus is. And when the presence of God is moving, I remember as a young boy, uh, the Spirit of God would be moving in church. And my dad would put his hand on my neck and he would lead me to where the altar was. Though he would be praying and I might be playing around a little bit or, or, or not being attentive, I knew the presence of God was there. And as I was growing and the more I understood and I see how others were responding to the presence of God, it helped me to respond in my life. But my parents took full opportunity to bring me where Jesus was. So the opportunity of the area. The second thing that I see is the opportunity of the, the age. The Bible says, and they brought young children. Sometimes when they think, oh, it's, they're just kids. Well, kids remember a lot of stuff. I remember who was mean to me when I was little. I remember what adults paid attention to me. I remember words that were spoken to me. You know, they might have not thought that I would, but I was taking in a whole lot, and so were you. And so the Word of God says that they brought young children. The one of uh, the, the chaplains I work with told me that the model of the Catholic Church was bring your child to the Catholic Church by the age of eight and we will make them a Catholic. Interesting. I don't agree with them making him a Catholic, but I do agree with the theory. What were they saying? They were saying this, that that play is pliable. And it is soft. And when they're young, their heart is tender. Bring them to Jesus so that He can mold and make them. The opportunity 
their age, but a lot bring them mother enough that they can spend a lifetime of knowing and loving Jesus. The world is busy indoctrinating our children at an early age, but it's important for us to share, amen, the importance of knowing Jesus and being the presence of Jesus. We recently watched a video with, uh, with our girls. Don't lose that with me if you don't do that. That's fine. But we, we, we occasionally do that in our house. We don't have a lot of time. But when we do, it's all usually cartoons. And so uh, someone recommended this cartoon. We read reviews on it. And uh, we thought well, it was good. And when we got done, I said to my wife, I said, boy, they're really pushing the agenda there about the environment. And I won't get into it. But they were pushing something there about the environment. And, and, and you have to be careful what you allow your children to watch because they're indoctrinating them at a young age. The greatest thing that we can do is give them the truth of God's Word at a very young age that their minds are young and pliable and they know that Jesus loves them and it's important and necessary to have a relationship with Jesus Christ even at a young age. It's interesting because... I think of Layla and I think of this Rachel. The Bible talks about a young girl being carried away captive. She was taking Sister Tina from her homeland. And she was from her mom and dad. She wasn't there. She was taken as a little maid, a servant girl there. I don't even know her name, but the name of the Word of God doesn't give it. But I know her master's name was Naaman. And so as she was there, and being a servant girl, she knew that her master was sick. And she said, Oh, I wish that someone could get a hold of the prophet from back in my home country because he would help out Naaman, my master. Isn't it amazing that that young girl wasn't bitter over being carried away from her parents? She didn't hold a hostility. But somewhere I believe that there was some basis in trusting in God and knowing that God would take care of you and God would take care of those around about you. Amen. I want Layla to, lay to grow up. Amen. Knowing that, hey, God can meet your need. And I told the neighbors, God can meet your need. Our church can pray for you. Why don't you come and be a part of the church? Why don't you come and be a part of the presence of God? I believe that every young person in here, that regardless of what life brings them, that if they will know God, they can evidence God above any other situation that happens in them. So they brought young children to Him the opportunity to him, Jesus, and their age. The objective was this, that he should touch them. Parents will go through great lengths to stay in line at Disney World to have a princess get a picture with their dog. People will drive hours to get a sports star to sign a, a ball or get an autograph or shake a hand. Just let me be in the presence of, a, of, of that Disney character or let me be in the presence of that sports star. But are we concerned about our children being in the presence of God? That God can touch them. Taking the opportunity to bring them to Him at their age and then the objective that God would touch them. Oh, I want God to touch our young people. No one can touch you like Jesus can. Here a few months ago, things were getting hectic in our home, and we always have our devotion to prayer at night. And uh, and, and and I was taking shortcuts, Sister Tina. I'll, I'll share my 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 shortcoming. And the girls were falling asleep, and I thought, well, we'll just put them to bed. And all of a sudden, that one little eye wire, she got up and she said, pray, Daddy, pray! <laughs> We've got to pray before we go to bed. You know what? We may not realize it, but God is touching our young people when we bring them to the presence of God. Let Him touch them. Don't be afraid if they come around the altar.